So now that we've talked about a lot of the different data storage and database technologies you might be using with your Hadoop cluster, let's talk about query engines that can sit on top of all those technologies and actually allow you to execute whatever SQL queries you want across this wide range of data, no matter where you might have it stored in your cluster. Let's take a look at how that might work in our next section. So before we talk about some of the external query engines that exist in the Hadoop world, let's uh, take a step back and remind ourselves of where we stand in the bigger picture here and what the uh, various pieces of the ecosystem we've talked about here. So we've talked about a lot of the core Hadoop ecosystem already earlier in the course, like HDFS and Yarn and MapReduce and Hive and Spark and all that good stuff. And we've talked about the uh, various external data storage technologies in the previous section, like MySQL and Cassandra and MongoDB, which are what we call NoSQL or non-relational databases, MySQL being a relational database. And we stuck uh, HBase inside here because it really just sits on top of HDFS and it's really more a part of Hadoop. It's the Hadoop ecosystem itself as opposed to an external piece. So up next, we're gonna talk about query engines, external query engines that can sit on top of various storage technologies you might have. First one we're going to talk about is Apache Drill, and that is a technology that lets you issue SQL queries across a wide range of stuff that might be in your cluster, your wider cluster, not just Hadoop. So that can actually issue queries across MongoDB or files that happen to be sitting on HDFS or S3 or even something else like Google Cloud Storage or uh, Microsoft Azure. And it can also talk to a Hive and HBase as well and unify these all into single SQL queries. So that can be pretty powerful stuff. Apache Phoenix, that's uh, the second thing we're going to talk about, and that sits on top of HBase. There's really more than one way to organize these things. I mean, I could have just as easily put Phoenix over in the uh, main Hadoop ecosystem circle over here because it does just sit on top of HBase, but conceptually, it's, an ex it's a query engine that sits on top of other technologies and only exists to let you issue SQL queries on things that aren't really a relational database. So from an application and an user standpoint, it also belongs in this circle over here. We're going to talk about Presto as well. It's a lot like Drill in that it lets you execute SQL queries across a variety of different storage technologies, but instead of being an Apache project, it's actually made by Facebook, but it is open source now, and it can talk to Cassandra, whereas Drill cannot, and, well, Drill can talk to MongoDB and Presto cannot, so which one you choose is probably going to be driven mostly by what database technologies you actually have the need to integrate with. So with that, let's dive in and talk more about Drill in more depth. So let's dive into Apache Drill and figure out what it's all about. Drill is just this system that sits on top of your various technologies for storing data. And it basically lets you execute actual SQL queries on top of data that might not even have a schema at all. And then it certainly isn't relational in nature. So basically it's a SQL engine that allows you to run relational looking SQL queries across a wide variety of non-relational databases and data files. So it can sit on top of Hive and MongoDB and HBase, as well as any flat JSON format or Parquet files that you might have sitting on your HDFS file system, or even Amazon S3, or files that you might have on Microsoft Azure or Google's cloud services, or even on your local file system. So even though these various data sources may not be relational in nature, well, none of them are really, with Drill, you can actually treat them as though they are. And it does an awful lot of complicated magic under the hood to actually make this work efficiently and reliably. It's actually pretty impressive stuff. Now, it's based on yet another Google technology that they published a paper on in the early 2000s called Dremel. So just like, um, you know, MapReduce translates to Hadoop and HBase is really Google's big table, Apache Drill is really Google's Dremel. So they just took that paper and kind of made their own implementation of it. But that said, it's actually been very well maintained and it's had a lot of exciting developments since it was first put out. So it's uh, definitely not stuck in the 2000s. The really cool thing about Drill is that it's actual SQL. It's actually based on the SQL 2003 standard. So any SQL query that you could dream up, you can actually execute it using Drill, even if you're just sitting on top of a flat text file. Well, not flat text file, it has to have some structure like JSON or something to it, but it can sit on top of non-relational databases like MongoDB or HBase or even on top of Hive. And since it can also just sit on top of raw JSON data, in some senses it can even take the place of Hive. You know, if you think about it, Hive is just allowing you to execute HiveQL queries, HQL, on top of your own data that's sitting on HDFS. Well, with Drill, you can do the same thing, but do it with real SQL. So pretty cool stuff. And where it really gets powerful is the fact that Drill also exposes a, an interface to other tools that makes it look just like a relational database. This is called ODBC or JDBC. And using that driver, you can connect external tools like Tableau or anything that expects to connect to a relational database and use it just like it's a relational database. So pretty hot stuff. 
Now, this all sounds too good to be true. Well, it kind of is. I mean, remember, these are still non-relational databases under the hood. So if you're going to be doing big joins between big data sets across different systems, you can't expect that to be efficient. You know, under the hood, it's going to still have to do a lot of rearranging of that data. So even though Drill brags about being very, very fast, keep in mind that you're you really shouldn't try to push your system to do something it wasn't designed to do. You know, again, always step back and think about your actual application, your requirements, the things you need to do with your system, and maybe that warrants an actual real relational database, okay? You know, don't use NoSQL or non-relational databases and slap drill on top of it unless you really have a need to do so, okay? Now, really cool thing, the, the kind of the... The big talking point of Drill is that it allows SQL analysis of disparate data sources, but without having to transform and load it first. So it, it really talks a lot about having SQL without a schema. So internally, it represents data using a JSON-like format, which is very loosely structured. You know, you can pretty much put any kind of data format that you want inside a JSON blob. And under the hood, that's how it works. If you do want to learn more about how Dremel, I mean, how Drill, ha, that's a little Freudian slip, how Drill works its magic under the hood, go check out drill.apache.org and they have a lot of interesting detail on how they actually do all this. I got to give props to the drill people that are working on drill because as an end user, it's incredibly simple to use and incredibly simple to understand. If you know how to write SQL queries, you know how to use drill. It's all extremely intuitive. There's zero learning curve at all. But under the hood, it's doing a lot of complicated stuff. And the fact that they can hide all that complexity from you as a user really speaks a lot toward how good of a system this is. You can even do joins across different database technologies, so or even with flat data files. So you can join data between your MongoDB instance and your Hive instance and your HBase instance and some random JSON file you have sitting off in Amazon S3 somewhere. So a really powerful thing about Drill is that if you have data sitting in a bunch of different sources, Drill can potentially let you tie them all together in single SQL queries very efficiently. So I think it's pretty cool. Think of it as SQL for your entire ecosystem. So whatever you're storing your data in, with some exceptions, you know, things like Cassandra aren't really supported yet with Drill, for example. But for a lot of data sources you might have and places where your data might live, Drill can tie it all together for you. So let's drill, shall we? Uh, let's import some data into our cluster. Uh, we're going to set, set up some data in Hive again. So we'll, again, use the movie lens data set. And what we're going to do is import some movie ratings data into Hive. And we're going to put our movie users data back into MongoDB like we did in the previous section. And we're going to set up drill on top of both of those databases and actually do a query across both of those systems at the same time. So first, let's get it all set up. And after that, we can actually play around and see what it does. <laughs> 